Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. In this video, I will talk about the client server model. And I will explain it in such a way where it doesn't go by the book definition or anything like that. I will provide real world examples that should be easy to follow and understand. As you can see, I have this illustration that I've made that uh, will help me explain what the client server model is and how it, it functions. I know it looks a little bit confusing here, but trust me, once I go through all of these steps, through all four steps, it will be pretty easy to understand. I will start with a real world example, something that you may be experiencing on a daily basis, and then move from there onto a business type of environment and where you would see client server type of model. Uh, so client server type of model can be used in a few different things, for example, emails, you know, things that you, you know, normally access on the internet or even just file servers, right? These are type of things where client server model is implemented. Again, I will not bother you with too much of textbook type of wording or anything like that. We will go and, you know, talk about some real examples, right? So let's say you have a bank account that you access on a regular basis over the internet, right? Let's say you, you know, you have a bank uh, account somewhere and then you have your web address that you use to you know visit the bank's website right and then you have your login information and then once you log in you have access to your account right you see all your money and you know this and that well in our case in in this example this is a perfect example of client server model that you just went through right possibly without even realizing it right so let's explain how this works client pc uh, in your, in our case, well, in your case too, I guess, uh, <laughs> will be your PC, right? Your desktop, desktop, your laptop, your tablet, you know, your phone, whatever it is that you use to access this account information on. So the first step you do would be type in the web address for this bank that you're trying to access. This is your bank. You go to their website, you type it in, right? This is your first step. This is the first part of sending data in into our application server right in our case it's a web server right we have a web server and you know of course this can be something else it could be actual application piece of software but in our case in our example it's a web server this is our step one we're sending information just by typing in we're accessing this application server and this application our web server will handle most of the workload for us right this is the part of the client server model in which most of the lifting is done by in our case it's the web server and also by our second step which we will talk about here in a second so now we have access to this web server and we uh, now at this point we are just sitting there we haven't done anything else we're at the website we're at the login screen right and now we type in our login information at our web server right right here we type it in and now this authentication basically will allow us to get to the step two which is access to the database server right database server in our case is directly connected to our bank bank has special separate servers that allow the web application right the website to access your account information which is located in database server so we're now at the step two where we're sending authentication data from the web server right to the from the web server to our database server so now when, when we're authenticated at step two now we can see all of our account information right we see all of our account information which is here, right? We have now full access to this database where, well, the part of that belongs to us, right? That belongs to our account. Now we have access to that. And uh, for us to actually be able to see it, this database actually has to go through the step three, which is send this data back, right? Send this data back, uh, data back um, which is step three, to our application server once more, right? It goes back to here. And now 
this application server or web server. I apologize, I keep saying application server or web server, but it's actually the same thing, right? It's just technically it's called application server, but it's a web server. So now database sends it back at step three, sends it back to the web server, and now web server says, oh, okay, so you, you know, you can, you're gonna let us access this stuff? And then, uh, oh, and then web server's like, oh, okay, fine. And then it goes to step four, goes to step four, and then sends the data back to client PC, which is your computer, right? Your laptop, your desktop, or whatever it is that you're trying to use, right? And now you can see all of this information from the database server. You see how it kind of went from one to two to three to four, and now you can finally see it. And majority of work is done by the web server, right? And the database server here, right? Majority of the work is done by these two. And that's the whole point of client server model so that your client PC does not have to work hard at all in order to acquire information that it is trying to access, right? So now we have a real world example of client server model. This could pertain to anything that you're trying to access over the internet. It could be just some kind of a program that you have and you use it on your client PC to access some other database, right? So it goes back and forth like that, whether it's your bank, whether it's, you know, whether it's some other website that works in a similar manner, it's all going to be client server model based and all, you know, majority of the load of the workload will be done on application server, web server, or application server, and then database server. Your computer, all it does is just pretty much displays the information and only small parts of it are actually, you know, all small parts of, of the processing is actually done on your computer, on the client PC. You know, for example, you know, storage of the cookies, uh, of the temporary internet files that, you know, that, that are, you know, basically that you access from the application server. And that's it, right? So. Now we have a, you know, an example, a really good example of what client server model is in a uh, real world type of environment. Okay, now from here, I'm just gonna kind of wipe this off a little bit with all of my markings, and then we're gonna move on to the business example of this. So before we move on to the business example of this, it's good to note that client server model is designed in such a way so that it can handle multiple clients, meaning thousands of computers potentially could access this database um, server at once, right? This is why there are two parts of it. We have one part that handles the front side of it, which is the application, then we got the database part of it, right? So it's designed so it can handle a lot of a lot of users, and this is also done with different, uh, uh, different amount of servers. So you can have multiple database servers, you can have multiple application servers, they're all designed to distribute the workload, um, also known as load balance, in order to achieve this. The whole point is so that the client PC does not have to work as hard, right? That's the whole point of client server model. So in a business environment, you will have a lot of client PCs, obviously. You know, let's say you start working at the call center. There might be, you know, thousand computers there, right? They're all probably going to be accessing certain applications. And chances are that all of these applications use client server model. So let's say you have a program or any type of application installed on your computer and you use this program to access certain database, right? Same thing. You go to the step number one, right? You go to the step number one, you call connect to the front end of it, right? To the application server, right? It could be a website again. It could be some kind of website. We don't know. This is all hypothetical and or it could be just a program that's installed on your computer or it could be a website doesn't matter you authenticate you go through the step one you send data in application service says okay you either have to authenticate or not sometimes you don't have to authenticate if it's just a file server you don't have to do and you know this type of this part of it and then at step two once you you know authenticate or it just says you can go through says okay um, then you go to step two and then you send data in 
and then you have access to the database server. And then it circle back, just like in the first example, you go to step three, your database sends the information in to the application server, and then the application server you know, goes to the step four, and then it displays it on your computer, right? So in a business type of environment, you'll have a lot of computers they use different types of applications in order to retrieve that data. Again, it could be some piece of software. It could be a web website that is used to access database. The whole point of it, they all, they always, it's always going to be access to the database server of some sort, right? It's going to be some data. We're trying to access it. And this is the client server model in such way that the client does not have to do pretty much any work, right? Very little and all the hard work is done by the, the application server and the database server part of it, right? Another example of this type of uh, situation uh, where you have client PCs that are what they call dumb, dumb terminals, dumb terminals. I hope I'm saying that right. It's either dump or dump. I think they're called dumb terminals. <laughs> I may have that wrong. But anyways, they're dump terminals, meaning that um, their uh, even operating system may not necessarily be local at all. You know, it's a, it's a terminal that you use to log in, and then you have an application server, right, that runs the OS. It runs the OS operating system for multiple client servers, right? And uh, you can use basically client PC, you log into it, and it'll, it'll have many different instances, chances are, right? It'll have many different instances of client server applications. And, you know, if it's a dumb terminal, you basically, you know, go to it, and it will have direct access to the application server, or in our example here, it's the operating system, right? It goes to operate, and then once you log in, you're actually logged in to this application server using the dumb terminal, right? Which is a client PC in our case. And the same difference. It goes to the step two again, and then connects to the database server and everything else. So you guys can understand now how this client server model works. And I hope I explained it in such a way where it's easy to understand. These are one of those things that are taught in school, right? They People teach this type of stuff in school, and if you don't explain it in, in a proper way, it's really hard to understand. I appreciate all the suggestions from people for video ideas. I really need those. Um, sometimes uh, for me, it's hard to come up with new ideas because I've done so many things and I've been doing this for a couple of years now that sometimes I think that I've done something, but I haven't. So if you have any more suggestions, feel free to leave them below, right? And if you're into more IT stuff, look in the description box there are like 10 different videos of my most popular stuff whether it's network administration system administration desktop support help desk web development all kinds of different stuff guys thank you so much i wish you best of luck in life and stay safe have a good day